Hi, and welcome to Teach Me JDE by Grant Thornton. Today, we're going to take a detailed look at the orchestrator monitor and all of its functionality. My name is Anthony Palmasano, and I'm an experience manager at Grant Thornton. I specialize in automation, process improvement, and implementation. I work hand in hand with our development team to design and build enhancements in JD Edwards Orchestrator Studio. And I'm joined today by one of our developers, Shravan Vijay. Shravan, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Anthony. Hello, my name is Shravan Vijay, and I am a technical lead at Grant Thornton. I specialize in automation, implementation, upgrade, support and integrations. We here collaborate to develop solutions, integrate, design, and build enhancements in JD. Okay, thanks, Robin. Let's go ahead and jump in the system and have you give us a quick demo. Let's jump into a demo session right now. The orchestrator monitor page can be launched in the following ways, either by entering the event page for the orchestrator monitor in the event page search button here, or by entering the application P980060X in FastPath and clicking OK. Once the orchestrator monitor page is launched, it gives us the details on health and exceptions in three different tabs. The health tab, the exception tabs, and the run details tab. Let's go in detail of each tab. The top right of the page displays the overall successes and failures in your orchestrations and notifications. The health tab displays information about the performance of each UDO in a summarized form. We can also use the filters, show all, failures, and success to display the data on the grid accordingly. We can also click on the refresh button to load the latest data. On the health grid, we have the below details, the name, which represents the name of the UDO, and also it shows whether it's an orchestration, a notification, or a REST API. The health last 10 displays a bar chart that shows the last 10 instances of the UDO that has been executed. The green bar says it's a success, and the red, it says it has ended in error. The success rate shows the overall success rate of the UDO. There are also details about the shortest run, the longest run, the last success, last fail, and the average number of runs per day. We can also see the detailed information of the health if we expand the grid below. Now let's move to the exception tab. The exception tab displays information about exceptions that has occurred with the UTU, the orchestration components, notifications, and the REST APIs. Exceptions can be occurring for many reasons. For example, invalid inputs, data type conversion errors, exceptions from a Groovy script, parsing error, and many more. There are also several search options and the ranges that is available by which we can filter out an exception. For example, we can use the custom range where we can give a date specific range of date and time. We can give a past hour, past 24 hours, past week, past month, and past year. We can also filter out based on the type, for example, orchestration, notification, schedule, rest, and all. We can also add additional search filters in the filter criteria here. The exception tab has two different formats in which the exceptions are being displayed. The first one being the list format where the exceptions are displayed in a list view. The second is a chart format where the exceptions are displayed in a graphical representation. We have different filter criteria and select ranges based on which we can change the data that is being displayed in a graphical representation here. We can also select based on the month view, the view, year view, or the day view. Also, we can also select the data based on the type. There's an orchestration, a notification, schedule, or a rest service. We also have details on each and every exception that is caught in the orchestrator monitor in this graphical representation. We can also click on a bar on the bar chart, which will take us to the specific exception that is captured. Let's return back to the list view. All right, since we are back to the list view, let us discuss in detail. The list view displays the general information about orchestrations, notifications, and schedule exceptions. In the grid, we have several exceptions that is listed out. Let's see. The request received tells us about the date and time when the exception has occurred. The name indicates the name of the UDO. The icon next to it indicates whether it's an orchestration, a REST service, a notification, or a schedule. 
the exception tells about the name and details of the exception. The status tells us about the HTTP status that was returned for the orchestration or notification that was being called. Additionally, we also have the username, the environment and the product code. We can also view additional details of the exception by expanding each row. We also have few additional features, for example, the step trace. This is only applicable for orchestrations only. This can be used to view details about each step in an orchestration. The input JSON, this can be used to access and view the JSON input that is passed in to the UDO. The exception response gives us the JSON response from the UDO. And there, finally, there is a message option which has been added in the release 9.2.6. We can click this button to view the custom message that is configured in the orchestration studio or the exception. We also have additional details such as UDO name, host address, role, the host name, the URL, the total processing time, the method used. Also, we have a additional uh, information known as the exception ID. Once we click on the exception ID, it takes us to a new application for orchestration exceptions, and we can view the related exceptions related to that exception ID. Let me give you a brief summary about the Run Details tab. The Run Details tab in Orchestrator Monitor displays detailed monitoring as well as a more comprehensive details of all transactions. This includes notification, input and output, the subscriber details, and the subscriber input and output parameters. The orchestration input and output parameters along with the step details for orchestrations that are enabled for monitoring. It also includes the REST services. The default view always displays high-level information about the name, duration, status, and so on. Thank you, Shravan, for walking us through the functionality of the orchestrator monitor. In summary, the orchestrator monitor allows you to review the health of your orchestrations and shows errors and exceptions. It can be accessed directly by the application or via an one page or from the orchestrator studio. And it monitors orchestrations, notification schedules, and AIS REST APIs. It's kind of like having it work with submitted jobs for batch versions, but instead for orchestrations, and you get even more details. One final thought is that this does build exceptions data in a table, and you might want to purge that data from time to time as it builds up. How can our Grant Thornton team help you? We are from multiple services to assist with your JD Edwards install or implementation, anything from a multiple day orchestrator training session to optimizations and enhancements of your current install and full blown JD Edwards implementations. Feel free to reach out via that email below, and I thank you for your time today. Bye bye.